Hi guys, I'm Dave Troll, and welcome to the Troll Gallery. Today, we're going to upgrade the dust collection system for my DeWalt TW735 planer. Again. Our first dust collection design had a bag that couldn't be emptied, and it kept falling in the way of my work. I got a bag with a zippered bottom and used some plywood to brace the piping, but it was still a pain to empty. It's time for version 3. I'll show you how I put it together, and we'll see if it works any better than the previous two. The biggest problem with my version 2 dust collection system was that the bag was a pain to empty. Even with a zippered bottom, you had to fight to get the chips out. And even though I often work outside, Dealing with all this dust flying around is no fun. It was even worse when the bag was full and more compacted. And the version 1 bag just had a 6 inch opening at the top and that was horrible. I started this project by ripping down some plywood with a table saw. One piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and one piece of quarter inch ply. Both cut to 25 inches by 15 inches. The 15 inch width fits nicely between the casters of my planer stand. I later cut the quarter inch plywood down to 15 inches square. It's the hazards of designing on the fly. Next, I found the diameter of the five gallon pail and lid that I'd picked up at my local big box store. I drew a center line on the quarter inch plywood and marked a center point seven and a half inches up from the edge. I set up my trammel points or big ass compass to the radius of the bucket or in this case five and a quarter inches and then drew a ten and a half inch circle. After drilling a three eighths inch starter hole inside the circle I grabbed my jigsaw and cut it out. With the circle removed, I could turn the bucket over, place the plywood on the bucket, and get a measurement from the bottom of the plywood to the bottom of the bucket. This measurement would be used for the sides of the bucket holder. Going back to the table saw, I ripped down enough scraps of 3 quarter inch plywood to 2 and a half inches to make the four sides of my bucket holder. I took these strips of plywood over to my miter saw and working with two pieces at a time I squared off one end, then cut two pieces at 15 inches and two pieces at 13 and a half. After setting the sides loosely together I placed the quarter inch plywood on top and here you can see that I'd cut it down to 15 inches square. I clamped it in place then screwed down one long side with some quarter inch screws. I would marked a line on each side 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge and pre-drilled the hole for the countersink bit, just to make sure I kept the screws in the center of the plywood sides. I flipped it around and screwed down the other 15 inch side, then fastened the shorter sides as well, making sure that the sides were flush to the top. I chose not to glue this together as it won't see much stress and, well, I wasn't really sure that this plan was going to work either. I couldn't help myself and just had to sand the top and the edges of the bucket holder. I grabbed my random orbit sander and some 150 grit to clean it up. Because you know, if this does work, I'll look at it for years, so it might as well be sanded and clean. Before attaching the bottom, I thought I should test the fit. I set the sides and top assembly on the 3 quarter inch bottom and popped the bucket in just to make sure it fit and would hold it securely. Knowing that the bucket fits the holder, I could flip everything over and clamp the bottom to the sides and screw it all together. Again, I'd laid out lines to keep the screws centered on the sides, pre-drilled, and this time switched to 2-inch screws for more holding power. 
I had ordered an Oneida dust deputy, and when it arrived, I pulled out all the parts and glimpsed at the directions. I'll add a link to that below. The first step was to use the gasket to mark out the three inch hole in the center of the bucket lid and also to mark the location of the six mounting holes to connect the dust deputy to the lid. I drilled the six mounting holes I had just marked with a 5 16 inch bit switched over to a 3 8 inch bit and drilled a starter hole near the edge of the three inch circle. Then I could cut out that circle with my jigsaw. With that done, it was time to begin the assembly. I placed a washer on each bolt, and then put a few bolts through the lid. I added the gasket, and then the dust deputy on top, and held them in place with the nut on the first few bolts. I could then go back and add the rest of the bolts and nuts. When they were all in place, I tightened them down with a socket and a wrench. It's finally time to get rid of my version 2 dust collector. While it worked okay, the plywood and piping took up extra floor space that I really can't spare. And as I mentioned, it was a pain in the butt to empty the bag. Once the old unit was off, I locked the casters and carefully laid the planer and stand on its side. I set the new bucket holder on the side of the planer stand and fastened it in place with several inch and a quarter screws. Again, I skipped the glue in case I decided to change this design in the future. And since the bucket is fairly small, even when it's full it shouldn't be too heavy. I think the screws will be strong enough to hold. If need be, I can go back and through bolt the holder to the stand later. Now I can set the planer back on its casters, put the bucket in the holder, and snapped on the lid to see the whole assembly for the first time. After a little persuasion and a little applied heat, I got one of the elbows that came with my kit onto the exhaust port of the planer. I added two half inch screws to help keep the elbow in place. Then I could connect the hose that came with the kit between the elbow on the planer and the side port on the dust deputy hose clamp on each end ensures the hose stays in place. Now this step may seem a little tacky, but I used a sock as the final filter on the dust deputy. As most of the chips and dust land in the bucket, the sock, I mean the filter, is just there to catch the finer particles. A hose clamp is all that's needed to hold it in place. I had an idea to put a sight window in the bucket so I could see when it was getting full. After drawing some layout lines, I used my oscillating tool to cut out the window. I decided that inch and a half by three inches would work and installed it just under the outer ridge of the bucket. I had some leftover eighth inch plexiglass that so would be perfect for my window. I cut it down to two and a half inches by four inches on the table saw and just used my crosscut blade. I held my plexiglass window in place inside the bucket and used the world's cheapest eighth inch drill bits to drill a hole in one corner. After securing it with a pop rivet, I drilled and riveted the other three corners. I really was using a brand new drill bit, but I think it's time to throw this whole bunch in the trash. To keep the dust in the bucket, I added a bead of silicone around the inside edges of the window. I let that dry overnight so the chips and dust wouldn't stick to the silicon. It was time to test out my new dust collection version 3.0. I ran some stock through the planer and the dust collection worked well. One thing I realized is that 
Since the dust deputy is opaque, the window in the bucket may not be necessary. Since you can see the chips falling through, you'll also be able to see when the bucket is full. A couple things to keep in mind. Since this planer has a built-in blower, I didn't need to use any additional vacuum. You could, and that would limit the blowback of chips I got through the front of the planer. If you did add additional vacuum, you'd also need to use a stronger bucket and lid. The plastic on this bucket is very thin and flexible, and it may not hold up to a vacuum. Not even a shop vac. This bucket is smaller than the first two bags I tried, and will need to be emptied more often. The good news is that emptying this bucket is much easier than dealing with those bags. And even though the bucket and the holder is attached to the side of the planer stand, it seems to have a smaller footprint and is easier to maneuver around the shop. This new version seems to have a smaller footprint than the last, and it's much easier to empty. And while I may have to empty it more often, that's okay because it's just so much easier to do. I'd love to hear what you thought about this video. Is there something I could have done better, faster, smarter? Put it in the notes below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, think about hitting that subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I put out a new video. Got a lot of new content coming up and you don't want to miss that. But for now, stay safe. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.